Now a book will inspire one man to strike out across the oceans and change the future of mankind. Fourteen seventy six, off the coast of Portugal, an Italian sailor, shipwrecked and left for dead by pirates. His name, Christopher Columbus. A dreamer who will unite a divided world. He believes he's been saved by God for a special purpose. In certain cases, an individual makes a huge, a huge impact. And Columbus is kind of a pure example of that. He settles in Lisbon, Portugal. With the help of his brother Bartolomeu, he begins to pursue a dream. He was a, a guy who had this tremendous personal ambition. He really, really wanted to pull his family up from the muck and become an aristocrat, become a gentleman. His dream is inspired by a book written 200 years earlier, but thanks to the printing press has become a bestseller. After the Bible, the most widely read book in Europe, The Wonders of the World by Marco Polo. The epic story of a Venetian merchant in his travels east, through the Holy Lands, Central Asia, and on to the exotic teeming cities of China. It is scarcely possible to set down in writing the magnificence of this province. Here they weave gold tissues, as well as every other kind of silk and cloth. The city contains merchants of great wealth and an incalculable number of people. Columbus was a classic example of someone who really was inspired by literature and dreamed big. He's possessed with this, you know, kind of desire to win the lottery of life. He wanted to be the next Marco Polo. Columbus's brother is a map maker. Together, they plot a revolutionary idea. To head east by traveling west. Not over land like Marco Polo, but by sea. What a great opportunity. What a wonderful thing to be part of. When I think of it for myself, it's like, woof, you get a little frisson. Map makers at the time know nothing about the Americas. To them, this double continent doesn't exist. They believe there's a vast, uncrossable ocean between Europe and Asia. Columbus thinks they're wrong, that the world is smaller than they realize. And it's quite easy to sail from Europe to China. When Columbus said, let's sail west, you know, they, had, they had a picture of the Earth in their mind. They said, are you crazy? No. For almost a decade, Columbus tries to finance his crazy scheme. He's turned down by the rulers of Portugal, Venice, and Genoa. But the balance of power in Europe is changing. Jose! With the help of the gun. It hasn't stayed a Chinese secret. All 
almost as soon as the Chinese had invented the first proper gun, within 40 years, this had spread all the way to Europe. No invention had ever moved as fast in the entire history of the world. 1486, southern Spain. 130 years after the Red Turbans, another rebel army fights for independence. Using the latest in gun technology, the Arquebus. Technology is always improving, but there's nothing like war to give an outsized advantage to whoever has that slight technological edge. The gun improves when it arrives in Europe by trial and error. They want to increase their range. So what are they going to do? They're going to increase the length of the barrel because they know a bigger powder charge will allow that ball to travel further in distance. They're going to tighten the tolerances to increase the accuracy of that ball. They're going to find a way so that it becomes a one-man weapon versus a two-man weapon. The real breakthrough came with a trigger mechanism. A lever that operated an arm that brought this burning match cord down into the priming. Individual soldiers were now armed with something quite deadly, quite accurate, and extremely portable. What happens here in Spain will help propel Columbus to the new world. Elora, southern Spain, 1486. A Spanish army below the walls of an Islamic fortress. The front line in a religious war that will shape the future of mankind. For more than 700 years, Spain has been run by the Moors, Muslims from North Africa. They create their own cities with their own architecture, centers of learning, preserving the knowledge of the ancient world. But Spanish armies try to reclaim the country for Christianity. They forced the Moors to retreat back to North Africa. All that remains is the Kingdom of Granada on the southern tip of Spain. Key to the conquest of Granada, the fortress of Alora. If the Spanish are to reclaim their country, they need to capture this Moorish stronghold. A Spanish captain, Gonzalo Fernandez de Cordoba. Young, ambitious, known in court as the Prince of Cavaliers. Cordoba will become one of Spain's greatest generals, a tactical genius, and champion of the arquebus. The gun is deadly but only at close range. He needs his men to be nearer the enemy. For four days, stalemate. Now he leads a fresh assault.
noise of the arquebus is the equivalent of a jet engine at takeoff. Manuel! Manuel, mirame! Manuel, mirame! Tranquilo, cuidado! Tranquilo, mirame a mí! Mirame a mí! Soldiers deafen. But the Spanish regroup and fight on. The closer they get, the more effective their guns. The victory at Alora, a turning point in the reconquest of Spain. Over the next six years, city after city falls to the Spanish. January 2nd, 1492. A day that changes the destiny of mankind. Spanish monarchs, Ferdinand and Isabella, ride victorious into Granada. Gonzales de Cordoba helps negotiate the surrender of the Moors. A Spanish chronicler calls it the most blessed day there has ever been. In the crowd, one man senses an opportunity. Christopher Columbus. Everybody's walking around with their chests puffed out, looking for new things to do. Now that we have our own country back, we can start trading for luxury goods with the Chinese. And lo and behold, Columbus shows up. Spain is the new power in Europe. Ferdinand and Isabella will fund Columbus's dream. He'll sail under a Spanish flag. Contact between East and West once brought death and disease. But mankind has unlocked the keys to a new future, harnessing the power of gold, gunpowder, and the printed word. History is made by people with ideas and a spirit of adventure. People who see opportunity where others see danger. A new age is dawning that'll unite a divided world. The age of exploration.